Closer, I love being the last speaker at a summit. Um, I know the Attorney General started you guys out this morning, and I actually talked with him on the phone this morning, and he was a little sick and kind of sounded like a frog. Um, and so I said, well, we'll start with the frog and then we'll end with the princess. <laughs> so thank you for the honor and the opportunity to speak with you today. I serve as Montana's Superintendent of Public Instruction and as an advocate for creating excellent public schools that truly educate today's children for tomorrow's economy. The Office of Public Instruction, the agency that I oversee, is here to guarantee that all Montana students receive a quality education through high standards, public accountability, and community involvement. So hasn't this been a great two days? I think it's been pretty awesome. I know that we Montanans feel very proud to have hosted such remarkable, smart business leaders from across the state, across the country, and from around the world. And I'm here to tell you, as State Superintendent, that investing in our children is as important as investing in the infrastructure, communications, technology, and research in our state. And we heard this message from nearly every speaker at this conference. You heard it over and over throughout the panel today. In fact, Jeff Emelt of GE said that schools count. That was his quote. Barry Diller of Expedia told us about a teacher that inspired him to do something and to be imaginative. Steve Ballmer of Microsoft explained the type of world in which our students will live and work in the not so distant future and how we need to help students look forward to that world. And our state leaders know the importance of education as well. Senators Max Baucus and John Tester and Congressman Denny Reberg worked tirelessly on behalf of Montana's education system. Their staff is great and we always appreciate their efforts to inform the federal government that we are a frontier state. We are more rural than rural and that any federal effort to transform the nation's education system must take into account the very rural status of states like Montana. Our own Governor Brian Schweitzer has advanced our children's future on several fronts, including working with the Office of Public Instruction to expand kindergarten the full day, and along with his First Lady, advancing the state's math and science initiatives. So I'm going to talk briefly about what's great about attending school in a frontier state like ours, what some of our challenges are, and, how, and the, some of the roles that all of you as business leaders can and actually must play to create the very best workforce right here in Montana. So in our state, we have a lot of small, close-knit communities where the school is the heart. In fact, 68% of, of Montana school kids attend schools, with, uh, attend schools with fewer than 500 students. I've given commencement speeches in towns where there are four graduates, but that where the entire community turns out to celebrate that success. I attended the Rural Teacher of the Year award ceremony last year, where she was rewarded for her work with eight students across multi-grade classroom, and they were all from three families. One of the fathers was a school board chair and his wife was the school clerk. Um, this teacher taught in a school where fish, wildlife, and parks field workers would stop by sometimes and invite the students to come out to the field where they had just tagged and darted a bear and let them see that process. Our smallest schools provide great hands-on educational experiences that cannot be found anywhere else. Our frontier communities are home to proud people who rely on their schools to produce the next generation that will keep their communities alive and bring back economic vibrancy. And Montana's urban schools also graduate a high caliber of students. For example, Bozeman School has graduated students who went on to impressive careers, such as a Stanford political scientist, a top advisor on Russia to President Obama, a Duke University heart doctor, and the inventor of the Montana turd bird. <laughs> yeah, you guys got that one. Um, this impressive roster of students shows that we're not only educating students to benefit this, our state, but to benefit the world. And traveling around this state, and I travel all over Montana, I see tremendous variety in our education system from 
one-room schoolhouses to overcrowded middle schools serving over 600 students. But wherever I go, I find a dedicated teaching force that gives us a competitive edge in Montana that speaks for itself. The math skills of Montana students exceed the national average and they continue to decline. The nation's report card is the only standardized test that allows for direct comparison across states and it shows that Montana eighth graders scored better than students in all but two other states and that Montana fourth graders scored better than students in all but four other states. Reading scores of Montana fourth and eighth graders are also among the top five highest scoring states as well. This year, Montana schools were recognized by the Education Trust for increasing student achievement in reading and math for both American Indian and white students over the past six years. Montana was also one of six states recognized for achieving significant progress for low income students. And in fact, our academic disparities between low income and high income students are among the smallest in the nation. Last year's graduating class outpaced the nation in ACT scores, demonstrating that they are indeed college ready. And we are proud of the hard work that these numbers reflect, the hard work of our students, our teaching force, and the communities that support Montana schools. Yet, as in many things, there is struggle and success. One of our challenges is to keep students in Montana once they've graduated. You, as business leaders in our state and in our nation, can help change this. The rural nature of our state offers great opportunity for individualized attention and community involvement, but it also creates isolation. Businesses must create new initiatives with local schools to connect students to internships, mentoring, and scholarship opportunities that will light a spark in a young person's life. You should never underestimate the power you can have in a child's life by taking the time to visit a school and develop an ongoing relationship with a class or to even help them create a business club. Partnerships between schools and business, partnerships between schools and business help students find pathways to prosperity by providing opportunities for students to learn skills and have initiative to build a business and become self-sufficient. Building an entrepreneurial spirit helps build communities from the ground up. We need to connect students to community and immerse them in real life experiences where they can take risks and where they can learn self-confidence. And there are some places in Montana that provide these types of examples. There are students that are putting up windmills that generate power for their schools, and these students are learning science, math, and teamwork all along the way. Students are raising chickens and selling the eggs to community members. Um, in fact, one student we know of went door to door selling eggs before the chickens were even laying the eggs. Um, so we told him he was counting his chickens before they were hatched. Um, but that is the spirit that we want to encourage. Students have created eBay marketing sites and are selling their community's goods to people all across the world. Students are making short films about historic sites in their community, marketing their films online, and then leading tour groups in the summer. Students are planting community gardens and selling those vegetables at farmers markets. Students are learning robotics and other technologies and are teaching those skills at adult education classes in their communities. And we need your help, business, to help create a positive public relation that promotes, a po po create positive public relations that promote these types of successful programs. Because it's important that we encourage, enhance, and expand this type of entrepreneurship that is connected to students' communities. And as much as we can feel great about what we accomplish, we also know that too many students don't ever get to walk across the stage and receive a high school diploma. The effects of dropping out of high school are damning to our state. High school dropouts comprise 75% of our incarcerated men and women. 